Good morning, everyone. Bruno Rodriguez, incident meteorologist, joined by our wonderful interpreter, Tara. So to begin, I'm just going to cover a little bit about what we saw on the fire yesterday. It was actually a pretty active weather day, as I'm sure you know. So we had a few thunderstorms roll through with that low pressure system. Uh, most of those really weren't strong. They were just forming over the mountain crests where we had that area of lift and then kind of gradually shifting eastward as the day and afternoon progressed. So we did get uh, probably a few dozen lightning strikes out there. Most of those uh, really um, striked uh, mostly in the black, uh, especially this area a few miles south of Mora. Uh, and then out a little bit into the plains. Not too much thunderstorm activity out over the western side of the fire. Uh, we saw a few outflow gusts with those, and mostly 30 to 35 miles an hour. We didn't quite reach that 40 mark, which was a good thing uh, for firefighters on the ground. Um, then also good news is that they didn't really drop much in the way of any precipitation. You know, they were very fast moving, uh, and they were still in their pretty infant stages over the fire as they progressed eastward into the plains they got heavier and produced some more measurable precipitation out there but as far as the fire itself is concerned for the most part we saw gusts uh, sorry um, precip in the range of one to two hundreds a couple places a little bit more especially around uh, El Porvenir here in the uh, middle of the uh, footprint here. Northern areas got a little bit more, but generally still even up there near Angel Fire, less than a tenth of an inch of precipitation. Some of those higher elevations actually did get a little bit of snow yesterday with those cells that moved over, and also overnight there was a little bit of shower activity as well, mostly above about 9,500 to 10,000 feet, that's where the snow showers were, dropped about a half to one inch of snow. We have some satellite imagery up here from this morning, and you can just barely see that footprint of snow up on the higher elevations of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. And notice, just in the uh, <laughs> time span of this morning, how quickly that snow is melting. You can visibly see that. We're in late May. So sun angle is getting to be pretty significant, which is really helping to melt that snow. Also quite a bit warmer today with those clear skies and lots of sun hitting the landscape. So as far as precipitation uh, goes, you know, it was certainly good to mitigate fire activity yesterday, but isn't really going to do much to mitigate things moving forward. For that, we really need what we call uh, wetting rain. Uh, wetting rain is uh, really a bit of a subjective uh, threshold depending on where you are. It can vary depending on uh, soil and vegetation conditions and how the rain falls, but it's uh, what we refer to as the amount of rain needed to significantly mitigate fire danger, at least temporarily, and we really didn't see that yesterday, unfortunately. So with that, uh, we also saw some fairly light winds last night, uh, mostly terrain-driven stuff. Uh, in other words, downslope, down canyon winds on this western half of the fire. Um, and I think there was a comment yesterday um, on the video about diving into a little bit more detail on terrain-driven winds. So I'm going to do a little bit of a mini deep dive uh, into terrain-driven winds now. Thanks, Steve-O, right on that. All right, so terrain-driven wind is something that we talk about a lot on fires when it comes to fire weather. It's a critical pattern um, in terms of influence on fire activity, and uh, it's something that firefighters are very keyed in on. So in an area like this with such complex terrain, this is one of the very, let's say, classic features that you see out there on a really regular basis. Uh, so in terms of local microclimates, um, this really plays a key role around here. So how does it work? So there are a couple terms that we typically associate with terrain-driven winds. The first is going to be upslope or downslope winds. So upslope wind, as the name suggests, is just wind that moves from the bottom of a slope or a hill up towards the top of the slope. And what we typically see is development of these winds sometime during the morning hours. The exact time kind of depends on the uh, direction that that slope faces, um, as well as the time of year, sun angle. So what happens is the top of the slopes start to get 
solar insulation in the morning. That solar insulation helps to heat the air temperatures near the surface. And as you get heating of the air, that air becomes essentially less dense or lighter, right? And lighter air wants to rise. You're essentially creating a little bit of mini instability near the surface. So when you do that, you get some air rising near the top of the mountain slopes, and it basically acts as a vacuum, right? It's sucking air from the surface, and that air has to be replaced, and that replacement air comes from the bottom of the valley. So that's how you start generating those upslope winds. Usually those are the first to start, and then one or two hours after your upslope winds, you tend to get what we call up valley winds or up canyon winds. Both terms are interchangeable. Reason this develops first is because you get that solar insulation first on the top of the slopes, whereas in the canyon, you're still shaded by the valley sides a little bit longer. So it takes a bit, a bit longer to develop those up canyon winds. This is really just a rule of thumb, um, and you don't necessarily see this every day. It depends, again, on uh, the time of year, the solar insulation. It'll depend on your weather pattern at the time. The stronger your winds, the less likely you are to actually see these local wind effects. And it can depend as well on the actual terrain itself and topography, how wide the valley is, how steep uh, the sides of the valleys are. At night, you essentially get the reverse of this, and I don't have images for this, but it works a very similar way. You get cooler temperatures at night, radiative cooling, and cooler air as opposed to hotter air is going to be denser and heavier. So what you get is a downsloping and down valley, down canyon effect overnight. And that's what I was referencing from last night that we saw over on this uh, western side of the fire all along the Pecos Valley. And this really has been a pretty recurring feature over the past uh, few weeks, and it's kind of a staple of uh, the microclimate, not just here in the Sangre de Cristos, but also really anywhere with complex terrain like this. So keying in on the time of that wind shift between your downslope overnight winds and uh, when they turn upslope during the day is one of those key pieces of information that we look out for on our daily forecast because that can significantly affect uh, fire activity in the morning. All right, so that's your little science tidbit uh, for today. Looking at the forecast, so today we have a pretty good quiet weather day all around, which is good news. We're looking at fairly light winds. We're still out of the north, but we are lighter than yesterday. So we're looking at gusts generally up to 20 miles an hour. Only some of those very higher elevations are really um, going to get into the low 20s uh, for gusts this afternoon. There's a little bit of south wind trying to creep up um, here in the I-25 corridor, uh, but that's really going to struggle to penetrate very far north. So for most of the fire, we're looking at a steady north, northwest, or northeast wind if you're on the east side of the fire. Humidities last night were really good. They came up again above 80% for pretty much every location. Uh, so just a little bit less than previous nights, but that's still very healthy. Uh, they're already coming down quickly, though. Again, sunny skies out there today uh, with more sun hitting the landscape. That means warmer temperatures, lower humidity as well as high pressure starts to build in from our west. So this afternoon, we're going to see humidity drop down into... I'd say the low to mid-teens probably for most of the fire, maybe some upper teens for those upper elevations, especially if there's still a little bit of snow on the ground to help mitigate that drop in humidity. Looking on to Thursday, tomorrow, a little bit of a transition day. So we are going to start to see high pressure become more uh, dominant over the southwestern United States. With that, we're going to intensify or increase that uh, warming and that drying trend. So for tonight, we're looking at considerably poorer overnight recoveries, probably close to 45, 50%. Um, still not critical by any means, but certainly a, a big change versus what we've been seeing in the past when three, four days or so. Winds tomorrow should finally see a return to that southwest flow, and that's some good news. Um, 
that's more of a typical wind pattern for this area, um, barring, of course, any local terrain effect winds. Um, but obviously, considering that the active side of the fire is on the west here, um, the favorable wind direction is going to be out of your west or southwest. And we're going to have that pretty much persisting uh, all the week and into the weekend. Um, reason being, we have a graphic here on the left. Uh, so here is a little bit of low pressure. Um, uh, well, um, well, I say a little bit, and not a little bit. It's a pretty strong low pressure system, especially for this time of year on the West Coast. Prague to move in uh, again late uh, this week, Friday, um, onto the West Coast. Swings in pretty nicely and then kind of stalls uh, once it reaches California and Nevada. So what that does for us is kind of wedge us between this low pressure system here and then the east um, and the east uh, central U.S. looking at some high pressure. So that's going to keep driving fairly healthy southwest winds uh, over Arizona and New Mexico uh, for the next several days once we get past Thursday. Um, and again, with that stalling, we're going to see that pretty much persist and even intensify just as it nudges very slowly eastward. So as you look as, at this uh, extended forecast, that's really the main thing that we're watching in addition to the significant drying. So we're going to be looking at increasing winds out of the west uh, pretty much every single day, nudging up those peak gusts by 5 to 10 miles an hour every day. At the moment, it's looking like Monday and Tuesday are going to be the windiest days. There is some potential for gusts to 45, even 50 miles an hour both those days. And come Friday, we should start to see humidity uh, dip into the single digits by the afternoon. Again, we saw that uh, pretty frequently earlier this month uh, during the um, active fire days. So it's definitely going to be a critical fire weather pattern and unfortunately is going to be fairly prolonged and persistent. So certainly something to watch. Overnight recoveries, especially as we head into the weekend period and early next week, dropping to 25% or less. So that's when we start to get concerned as we uh, increase that burning period um, with those low overnight recoveries. Not shown here, but another thing that we're going to be looking at is increasing uh, mixing heights, which is essentially the height at which smoke is able to rise in the atmosphere. So as we get a little bit more unstable and as we get a little bit warmer near the surface, that air is going to want to rise a little bit further up. So don't be surprised to see uh, more vertical development to smoke plumes as we head into the weekend and early next week. I will touch on it uh, just because you might be seeing on your, on your uh, weather apps uh, or hearing it on the news. There are some indications of a potential pattern change for kind of the second half of next week. Uh, so following this high pressure, it looks like that trough might finally want to accelerate a little bit eastward. And that could bring us into more of a stormy pattern with potential for some rain and thunderstorms. But that is six, seven days out, which, believe it or not, is still kind of fantasy land when it comes to weather forecasts. So keeping an eye on it. Um, but for now, the priority is the critical fire weather pattern that is incoming. So that is about all I have. Um, thank you for joining us.